Hi everybody, it's Thomas here from Thomas Fitzgerald Photography and in this video I want to talk about customizing the interface in Capture One. So one of the great things about Capture One is that you can completely customize the interface. So this can be as simple as rearranging tools on the tool panels to changing the icons in the toolbar or you can actually create entire workspaces and save them. In this video I'm going to show you some of these options and have a look at how you can customize the interface and we will make our own tool panel with some favorites and what we'll do is we'll create one that might make it easier for people who might be switching from Lightroom. So let's dive right in. Okay, so let's start with the basics. Um, so one of the first things you can do is you can customize the toolbar and if you're on a Mac, this is kind of standard to most Mac applications. So if you right click on the toolbar and choose customize toolbar, you got a whole bunch of options. So here are different things that you can uh, swap in. Um, so for example, if I want to add annotations, I can drop this in up here, say for example, or let me see what else can we do. We can add our workspaces pop up so we can put this over here. And once you're finished, then you just click done. So here I can have a list of all my saved workspaces, which we will get to in a little while. Um, so that's kind of the basics of rearranging the icon. So that's kind of one of the most simplest things you can do. So next up is we can on any of the tool tabs. So, so down the left here, we have our tool tabs and kind of the main interface of Capture One. And any of the tools here on any of the tool tabs you can rearrange. So for example, here on the exposure tab, I can drag the dynamic range to the top. Um, or we can just put that back. And if I want, if you're running Capture 120, they have this new area at the top, which is kind of the pinned area. So if I want exposure always to be at the top and not on the scrolling section, I can just go move to pinned area. So now when I drag up and down, the exposure tool stays at the top. And if I want to get that back off, I can just bring it back down. Okay, so that's fairly straightforward as well. So the next thing you can do is you can actually add any number of floating tools. So to do this, you just go window, create floating tool, and then pick any of the tools that you want. So let me see, so say I want a color balance. So now I have a floating color balance tool and I can move this around. And let me see, I can create another tool, create floating tool, let's say color editor. We'll, we'll keep to a team here. And again, I can move this around, put anywhere I want. And you can also dock these together so we can create kind of one long tool. And then if you want to, and if you could actually put these on a second monitor and then to get rid of them, you just go remove tool and the little dot, dot, dot menu and just go remove tool. So the other thing you can do is on any of your tool tabs, you can also add tools here as well. So you just right click on it and go add tool and then whatever you want. So say for example, on your exposure tool, you find that you're always jumping back and forward to the color tool tab to access the white balance and you want white balance to stay with this. So all you have to do is just go add tool, white balance, and we now have a white balance tool and maybe you want to put that at the top or put it in the pinned area even. So like, so just drag it up to the pinned area. And now you have a white balance tool. And again, if you don't want this, you can just get rid of it by going remove tool. Okay, so another thing you can do is this whole tool tab section. Um, if you would prefer this on the right hand side of the screen rather than the left hand side of the screen, you can just go view, customize tools, and then place right. So this will swap them around. Um, if you want to hide the film strip here, you just go command B and that will hide it. Um, and it's control B on a PC. And again, if you want to put them back, again, you just go view, customize tools, and then place left. So another thing you can do is um, you can actually create your own tool tabs. So here we have the default one. So we have lens correction, color, exposure, details, and so on. But you, if you right click here, you can go add tool tab. So, at the top of this little pop-up menu, you'll see these are the ones that are defaults. So these are our Capture One ones. And you'll see the ones that are grayed out are the ones that are already active. And you will see that there's a couple of um, Capture One supplied tool tabs that aren't enabled by default. And you can actually just enable these by just turning them on. So um, some of these are from older versions of Capture One, so you don't really need them anymore. 
Um, so, but some of them are from New Orleans. So, if, for example, I can turn on the black and white tool tab, and this will give me some tools for uh, working with black and white images. So, it's basically just a collection of tools that are on other tool tabs, but it makes it handy because you don't have to keep going back and forward. Uh, one of the things to note is because these are from older versions of Capture Ones, they're not set up for the scrolling interface. So, if you want these to scroll, you have to kind of go through it and go. Move to scrollable area, move to scrollable area, move to scrollable area, move to scrollable area, and so on. Um, but again, I'm not going to use this, so I'm just going to get rid of this. So to get rid of a tool tab, just right click on it again and go remove black and white tab. Okay, and then remove. So the next thing I want to do is I'm going to create my own tool tab. And this is quite simple. Just right click on it again and go add tool tab and then custom tool tab. So this will pop up a little new custom tool tab um, dialog box, and we want to give it a name. So I'm going to call it Favorites, and I'm going to spell it right, Favorites, and then you can choose an icon first. So uh, I'll give it a heart because it's Favorites, and then go Add Tab. So we now have an empty tool tab. So what I thought for this was uh, I would create something similar to Lightroom's develop module so that if you're switching from Lightroom or you've recently switched from Lightroom and you're having trouble jumping back and forth to tabs and finding things and you want something a little bit more familiar, I'm going to show you how to create uh, something that will be similar to Lightroom. Now there is actually a workspace for this already and I will get to that in a little while. Uh, I actually have a separate video about that and I will link it in the description below, but that's from an older version of Capture One and it actually adds a lot of unnecessary stuff. So I'm going to create one that's just kind of similar to the develop module. Um, it's not going to have everything in it because you don't want to have it too cluttered. So uh, I'm going to start by add tool and the first thing I want to do is add a histogram. So we'll find our histogram. Okay, so we have a histogram at the top. So the next two we want is our exposure tool. Okay, and we want to move this to the scrollable area. So we want our histogram pinned to the top and our exposure will scroll. So once we've added extra tools to this. So the next thing we want to do is add tool and we want high dynamic range. And you can obviously do these in any order you want. I'm just trying to match roughly Lightroom. So the next thing in would be clarity. Again, this is not going to be exact. So, and we want next thing after this would be curves. Okay, and then after this we would have. Okay, okay, and of course I actually missed a valuable one. Um, and <laughs> I missed the color editor. So we're going to add that. Add to color editor. Okay, and we actually we're going to move this up so that would normally be above, is it above or below the curves. Uh, we'll put it below the curves. Okay, so now we have a tool tab that kind of matches Lightroom. Uh, as I said, it's not perfect, um, but it's similar enough. And and the handy thing about this is it, you don't have to keep jumping back and forward between tabs. Oh, actually, I just realized I missed another important one, and that's white balance. So we're going to go add tool white balance, and we'll drag this. I should be up the top as well. Okay, so there we have it. There is our Lightroom kind of similar tool tab. So as I was saying, uh, the advantage of this is you don't have to kind of jump back and forward between tabs. So that is one of the one of the benefits of have creating your own tool tab, um, so that you can quickly access things. Uh, Capture One does come with something similar called the Quick Tab, but uh, it doesn't have everything on it, and I generally don't use this. Um, so. Here we have our own favorites tab. So the next thing we can do is that we can actually save this and we can save any combination of layouts. So if I had moved this to the left and if I'd add a bunch of um, different floating tool tabs, uh, they can all be saved as part of a workspace. And to get to this, we go up here to window workspace and then just go save workspace. So we'll call it Thomas favorites and then just hit save okay and now so now I can go workspace I can go back to default which will bring me back to the default workspace and then I can go back to my new one which I've just saved and you can see I, I've been experimenting with this for a while so I have quite a few here so here's the one I just saved it's Thomas favorites 
And there we have the favorites tab that we saved earlier. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of how you can customize the Capture One interface. Um, there's lots of things you can do, and some of the different ways people have done it are quite intriguing. Um, and it also comes with uh, some default workspaces as well. So for example, there's workspaces for dual monitors. So as I mentioned earlier as well, there is one that's kind of a default for people switching, and that's called Migration. And I have a separate video about that below. I don't recommend using that anymore because it actually adds too much to it and you're scrolling up and down and it's, it's a bit of a pain. Um, so it's easier just to create your own workspace uh, like I have just done. So that is pretty much it. I, I hope you have found this useful and if you want more Capture One videos, um, I have a whole playlist here on my YouTube channel about um, with my Capture One videos in it. and check out my Capture One style packs which are available on my store and the link will be in the description below. And if you've enjoyed this video, please like, share and subscribe. And thank you for watching. See you in the next video. See you next time.